The saying that I like to say a lot is, there's no such thing as failure. There's only learning opportunities. The only time you fail is when you don't learn or you die. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Get away from me. I, I thought I had a week to study for you. Room service, open up. What do you, what do you mean room service? This is a closet. Hey yo fam, just open up. I just have a question to ask. What is it? Which one of the following is the mitochondria? Is it A, the bread getter of the cell? B, the powerhouse of the cell? C, ATP generator of the cell? D, none of the above. some good tea. Jasmine, my favorite. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those who are new here, my name is Tahir Daruj and I'm a first year medical student at the University of Western Ontario Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best study method that you should be adopting and the one that I currently use in med school and wished I would have used in undergrad. It's called active recall. So exam seasons come right up around the corner and it's super important to have proper and efficient study methods because it's unfortunate that our professors don't actually teach us how to study and we're kind of expected to learn how to study on our own. And sometimes we adopt very inefficient study strategies, despite them being the most common. These include note-taking, highlighting, and rereading your notes. Your study methods are inefficient. Now, the benefit of active recall is that it cuts down on all the time that you can spend on studying in these inefficient strategies and spend them more time studying. Kidding. Now a person does a really good job at talking about the evidence behind active recall and the evidence behind the inefficient study strategies is Ali Abdel. He does it in a soothing British accent with piano music in the background. I'm gonna link his video down in the description below. Here's the structure of the video. I'm gonna be talking about what is active recall, how it works, and how I use it in everyday studying, and how I wished I would have used it in undergrad. I'm gonna be linking to timestamps down below where you can skip through the video and watch certain sections if that's what you feel like doing. All right, what is active recall? Active recall is when you put yourself into positions where you're required to test the knowledge that you put inside your brain. It's based upon the fact that the more you output information, the more that actually stays in. It's kind of counterintuitive. And this method is highly dependent on feedback because when you receive feedback, whether it's in getting things wrong or getting things right, you actually make those connections in your brain, those neurons that fire, much stronger. I'll show you guys how active recall works. So in order to demonstrate how active recall works, I'm gonna be using common examples such as learning how to shoot a basketball. First, we watch someone shoot a basketball. I like to call this part the input phase. So we input that information of someone shooting a basketball. Next, we take a ball of our own and then we shoot it. This is what I like to call the output phase. Next. If we've done it all right, then we score a basket. I like to call this the outcome. If you get it wrong, then we gotta go back somewhere. This is what I call feedback. So it could be your teacher just telling you, you know, you suck at shooting a basketball, do it again. And so what we do is we go back. Either we watch the teacher shoot the ball again, so we get another dose of input, or we shoot the ball ourselves as many times as possible until we get that outcome and scoring a basket. And that's pretty much how active recall works. Now, let's apply it to learning and studying. Same thing. So we have our input. What do you think the input's gonna be? The input is actually our lecture, slides, and textbooks. Note-taking, rereading, and highlighting actually fall under the input stages of learning. It, although it's it's good and you can learn how to shoot a basketball, but you know if you've never shot a basketball before, you can take all the notes you want, but your brain won't make those connections. This is where the output comes in. So the output, in this case, is self-explanation. Qu 
question making, practice, or games and flashcards. The outcome is a 4.0 GPA or 90 plus. Sometimes we get things wrong and we need some feedback, so we gotta go back. And if one of these things from the output doesn't work, then we gotta go back, whether it's re-watching the lectures or keep doing some more practice or more games or more question making and answering them. And then once we get to the test, which is here, we get that 4.0. That's how Active Recall works with studying. All right, so now that we know how Active Recall works and the, the theory behind it and how it works in studying and everyday life, I wanna show you how I use it in studying for my courses in med school and how I would have used it back in undergrad for the courses I didn't do so well in. All right, so the way I'm gonna tackle this is that I'm gonna show you the lecture and then apply my methods that I use when I'm studying, such as self-explanation, question making, practice, and then doing some games as well. All right, so the lecture that I have pulled out is from my blood lectures, and we're learning about erythropoiesis, which is the formation of red blood cells. So the first method is self-explanation. The way I go through this is I already have my initial dose of input, such as the going to classes and then having the slides as well. And so now my output, I'm gonna explain the concept to myself as if I never seen the slides before. But what I do is I go through each slide and then I explain the concept as it is, just without looking at the content, I just look at the title. And so for this case, we're looking at erythropoiesis, which is the formation of red blood cells. So in this case, I'm not gonna look at the slide. And so erythropoiesis occurs in the bone marrow and it's stimulated by the hormone EPO, erythropoietin, which is formed in the kidneys. And it starts off with red blood cell myelocytes, and then it goes to promyelocytes, and it goes to erythroblasts, and then it goes to reticulocytes, and it goes to red blood cells. That's how red blood cells are formed. Cool, all right, let's see how I did. I did terribly, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I didn't do to so bad, but it shows that the learning point here is, well, when you explain a concept, things that you don't know are things that you don't know, which means that if you're tested on them in a test situation, then you won't know the answer. So remember, we did our output, we did the self-explanation, now it's time for feedback. So I check, what did I miss? Um, pluripotent stem cell, committed stem cell, then we did pro-erythroblast, okay, then erythroblast, then I got reticulocyte, then we got red blood cell. But I also added some information that wasn't in the slide. And this is what I mean by self-explanation. You don't have to look at the slide word for word and then explain it as it is. When you explain things in a way that you understand it, then it sticks better. Because EPO made in the kidneys wasn't on the slide, but I knew that from my common knowledge. So that's explaining concepts to myself. Now, once I got my feedback, then I do it again, or I go through another method. All right, so the next method is question making. This one's a little bit more time consuming, but it's a lot more comprehensive. So the point of it is that you make the question, and then you go through your questions, and then you answer them. And then whatever questions that you don't answer are the ones that you need to go back and refresh your knowledge upon. But I also use something called lecture objectives. Usually professors put this at the beginning of the slideshow. So for this lecture, one of the lecture objectives is describe the normal steps of RBC production which is essentially erythropoiesis, but that's not really what they test on. So describing the normal steps of RBC production won't be a test question. But then when I look at the slide, I look at everything that's on the slide and all the information that's on there. And then I ask myself, okay, hmm, where is erythropoiesis taking place? Um, at what point do cells lose their nucleus in erythropoiesis? Hmm, are there clinical situations where you might see more of a certain step than others? So even though that the questions don't get answered in this exact slide, but the thing that I'm doing is when I'm asking these questions, I'm gonna keep these thoughts in my head. And so for future slides, maybe I might come up with the answer. So I'm gonna make another video about this where I'm gonna go more in depth on how to make your own questions and prepare for exams and maybe anticipate questions that you might actually see on the exams because I've had a couple of moments where I've written some questions and they actually 
appeared on the exam. It's a great feeling. So yeah, I'll show you guys later. All right, now method three is practice, practice, practice. In med school, we have this book called The Pre-Clerkship Workbook, where a bunch of upper year students actually make questions from the content that we're learning and they made a textbook about it. And I try to get to these questions as fast as I could. So maybe after one run through with the slides and then I do the questions because that's where the bulk of your, your learning comes from. Remember the whole feedback process. You make those networks stronger and those connections stronger when you get more feedback. Because when you're rereading and note taking, you don't know if those things are right or wrong. But when you do questions, you know they're right. So in undergrad, what I used to do is, I used to get as many practice resources as possible. For instance, I remember in my chemistry class, when we had lab books, they used to have practice questions inside the lab books and practice exams, and I'd go through all of them as much as possible. And sometimes people were able to share past exams and go through that. Those are also golden because they're exactly what you're going to be tested upon rather than making up those test questions. And so that's why practice is so important, which because you're able to get that feedback, that immediate feedback and remember it more. Remember, the more you output, the more that stays in. All right, and the fourth method that I use is actually playing games, or you can replace this with using flashcards. So using games such as a matching game is very helpful for memorization based tasks. And I used this when I was teaching English in Korea. And it's kind of like flashcards, but on steroids, because you do write down things on cards, but then you have the added bonus of guessing what each card is, but having to remember their location as well. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys something. I feel like these new methods that I'm teaching you guys and telling you about is so different from the conventional and traditional methods that people are so used to. And there's a reason why people don't make the switch. For me, when I was in undergrad, I didn't make that switch because I don't like knowing I'm wrong. I like knowing that peace of mind where I'm doing my notes and I'm reading them and I feel like this information is going in, but we don't like to know that we fail or get something wrong. It took me a while to realize that. And the saying that I like to say a lot is, there's no such thing as failure. There's only learning opportunities. The only time you fail is when you don't learn or you die. And so that's how I approach learning now using active recall. I look for as many opportunities to test myself to make sure I can use this knowledge that I got inside my head and just go out there and put my knowledge out there. Please let me know what you guys think about these methods. Leave your comments down below. And if you have any questions about active recall, or you wanna learn more about Active Recall, please feel free to comment or send me a message, send me an email. Follow me on my socials, smash that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share with someone who might need some study strategy help. And as always, best of luck with exams. You got this and yeah, all the best, peace.